ready. Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. How many conservative YouTubers are quiet as a church mouse on this topic? Okay. Y'all not watch everybody. As long as you're not doing the same type of commentary, I love to watch other people. I'm into a lot of documentaries. I watch a lot of uh, news-based commentators. So I find it very, very interesting that some of the top conservatives on YouTube, the Ben Shapiro's, the um, Candace Owens, let me see, there's a few others, child. The Patrick Bet Davis, you know, I do like Valuetainment. I don't agree with everything, but I do like them. Mark Dice, Matt Walsh. They have been really, really quiet on this topic. And what I've noticed is that they have all stayed on code. What I find very, very interesting um, about this situation is that when it's black folks, if these black folks were all the way in the wrong, or let's say they wanted to go confront the white folks and the black folks got their ass whooped, oh, this would be the main thing that these folks would be talking about, okay? Now, Jason Whitlock, he did talk about it. I don't know if the Hodge twins did. I haven't watched them. I don't know if they did. They might have. I know Officer Tatum talked about it, but I wasn't feeling their commentary. It was a lot of excuses. It was a lot of excuses coming from Jason. And I and I like to watch things and just be fair. I go and I watch everybody without a bias because at the end of the day, I don't, I don't take offense to stuff. Your position and how you see things, that is your position. If I don't like it, I can leave, right? But Jason, it was like, damn, you're blaming everybody but the folks who started it. Well, you know, as I'm watching the video, the security guard, he's frilling his arms, he's in their face. You know, you, you, you're you supposed to de-escalate. He came to them real aggressive. Do you know how many times that they had to have told that people to the point that it got to the point where he had to come aggressively? There was a whole boat of people, black and white, literally saying, move, bitch, get out the way. Get out the way, bitch, get out the way. The entire boat was chanting, move, bitch, get out the way. Get out the way, bitch, get out the way. How long do you think them people have been circling in that damn river trying to get off? Boat rides are fun for a few hours. After a while, you'll start to get seasick and you want to get back on damn land. None of these folks are calling out the entitlement that these white folks felt that they didn't have to move their boat. I saw another video from another person who was on the boat. They said that even before the boat left, they were saying, if this is y'all's boat, please move this pontoon. This boat cannot be here by the time we get back. Do you know that some of the white folks who had, who were friends of the people who owned that boat were on the boat, were on the big boat? And none of them said, hey, that's our boat. We'll go ahead and tell them to move. None of that stuff. So some of those white folks who had, you know, who were friends with the people who owned the little pontoon, they were also on the big boat. But Jason is up here talking about, Oh, he was too aggressive. And then black women got blamed. Because the black girl is saying, uh-huh, uh-huh, beat they ass. That's what they get. Look how this black woman is instigating everything. She's wanting to see them fight. Maybe they're frustrated. And that's why she's instigating everything, allegedly instigating everything because they sat there and watched the whole thing play out with these folks feeling like they didn't have to move with these folks feeling like they were above the law he had every excuse i was like wow this is two for one the day before he got mad at bryson gray i was watching they were talking about andrew tate because there's this big battle in the conservative community 
with Andrew Tate and, you know, Christian conservatives like, you know, Candace Owens taking up for him and then other people saying that he's just trying to turn over a new leaf because of the, you know, all this stuff in Romania. And so Bryson Gray was basically saying, like, it's weird that y'all have all this disdain for Andrew Tate, but Andrew Tate is not much different than Donald Trump. Bryson Gray started quoting the Bible and was quoting out Christian hypocrisy. Jason Whitlock shut him down. We're not going to talk about Trump. We're keeping it on Andrew Tate. Nope, he shut him down. I've never seen him shut down somebody when you're supposed to be the orator of free speech. Shut Bryson Gray down, had an attitude because Bryson Gray was pointing out y'all's hypocrisy. Y'all, y'all want to have all this hate for Andrew Tate and his moves, but not the same energy for Trump. When he's arrogant, he's loud, he's misogynistic. He got claims against him for, you know, assaulting women. So I don't know. I just that that's just two for one with me that he's he's done it back to back. Even Shamika Michelle came on there and kept it real. She said, Well, I'm gonna keep it real with you. When I seen them, you know what I mean, beating them white people and throwing that lady in the river, my shoulders couldn't stop moving. Bitch, I was rolling, rolling, rolling on the river. You know what I mean? Like, even she kept it real. She was like, you know what? I'm concerned, but you know, I still got a little bit of ratchetness in me. And Jason was so irritated by her commentary. You could tell he was not feeling it. He was so irritated by her commentary. Even with Officer Tatum, he was, it was too much walking on eggshells. Well, we don't know what was said. You know, we don't know if he cursed at them first. Were they wrong, you know, for hitting him and attacking him? Yeah. His energy was very soft, very neutral. Because when black folks mess up, oh, he'd be ready with the handcuffs, honey. This is what I've been telling black folks. Black folks always doing this, this, and that. But he was very, he, would, he didn't have the same energy. Because I, I catch Officer Tatum. You know what I'm saying? When he pops up on my feet, he did not have the same energy with his reply. I was, you know, I was, I was just kind of, I'm kind of sidelining it. Candace Owens won't shut the fuck up ever. And she's had nothing to say about this situation. They're all talking about Neo and his beef with the trans community. That's what they're, that, her, uh, Ben Shapiro, they're all talking about that. I haven't watched, somebody asked me if I watch ABL. I haven't watched it. I don't know if he's done the video yet. Um, I, and I, I, I'm i an ABL fan. He supports me. He, he's a tea sipper. You know what I mean? So um, I haven't seen ABL's commentary on it yet. I will watch it when I get a chance. I just saw Officer Tatum's today. And what I've noticed, a lot of them waited a lot of, a lot of days before they did their commentary. Usually when Black folks mess up, all oh, them... Child, they are going live that day. They got the tea. They got the receipt. Black folks are messed up. We're going to talk about it. Come on, get up in here. They are going live that evening. That studio is ready. They done sprayed that for brief. Let's go. Oh, it took them a few days to come out with this story. And I really feel like they're only talking, the ones who are talking about it, they waited because they were hoping more audio would come out showing that, that, that the, the security guard was somehow the aggressor. They were hoping that something else would come out to try and, you know, find a leeway and find an out for the white folks. Now, me and Emily had a good old conversation um, yesterday. And I told her, I was like, you know, I, I'm, I'm very, it's very interesting, the stuff that is going on right now, the silence of many in the white community to hold these white folks who are wrong accountable. Everything is now everybody's talking about peace and, you know, um, these are just a lot of, a lot of people just, they were just bad. It just wasn't that serious. Now everybody's copying, please, and wanting peace. But when it's Black folks messing up, Everybody has commentary and we hold our own accountable. When black folks mess up, we hold them accountable. Me as a black commentator, I hold my own accountable. 
But it's very interesting that when white folks are in the wrong in this situation, I held them accountable just like I would have held it if it was black people. But where are all these other voices who always hold black people accountable, Mark Dice? But now you have nothing to say about your brethren and their entitled asses and their asses that got whooped. You're very quiet. Anytime a black person does something, you got your pen and pad. You going live the same day. Very, very interesting. They, this is what it means to be on code. I hope y'all are taking notes. That's why I tell you, you're supposed to watch everybody. You're like, oh no, how can you watch Fox? And I've watched everybody. You would never relegate me to just watching C and DMN or MSNBC. I watch everyone when it comes to news and news related topics. I want to know what everybody's talking about. And this is what it means to be on code. They are trying to bury this story because they know they have big platforms. And if they bring light to it, showing white people acting, behaving badly, it's going to piss off their supporters. That is why a lot of them, Jason, Officer Tatum, they're walking on eggshells. Candace said, I'm not even going to touch the story. But trust me, if that was a brawl with black folks, oh, they, it was, if it was just all black people brawling, oh, they would have just, they would have ate it up. It had been trending. Even the mainstream media is not really covering it. Have y'all noticed that? Even the mainstream is not even covering it. It's still just local news in Alabama. It's not on the big mainstream platforms. Very interesting. Because again, if this was a black situation with black folks just fighting each other, all would be everywhere. But when you got white folks who were entitled, who started the whole drama, it's being brushed under the rug. It's really sad. Now, I do want to address something that Jason was saying. CNN did? Okay. Thank you for pointing that. I might have missed it. Good morning, America. Okay. Thank you. Because, like I said, a lot of them took a while. So, if it was on CNN and Good Morning America, okay, good. Because I didn't see them. But I know for me, I was when I was doing my edits, when I was on the story right away, it was mainly local. It was mainly local stuff. So maybe now the mainstream is jumping on it. But um, I also want to say this, because one of the things that Jason said did kind of bother me. He was saying that basically he didn't like the way Black people were acting like this was such a spiritual thing. And, oh, that's where the slaves came. And that's where the slaves docked. And, you know, Black folks are acting like this video is like the coming of the Messiah. You know, he said like a lot of like just really, you know, trying to like just diminish. One, as Black people, we laugh with our pain. That's why the memes, the jokes, when I tell you it was a key key, when that family literally threw the hat up like a bat signal and they're like, who, huh? And they were doing the whole Wakanda thing, the Jabari tribe and grabbing the folding chairs. That is how we cope with shit. I'm going to tell you that whole situation was very spiritual, okay? Now, for y'all who are here for just the celebrity gossip, y'all may want to leave. You know, I know that's what y'all are here for. We're done talking about that. Now we're going to get into some real shit. We're going to get into some stuff that's really affecting my tea sippers. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get into some geopolitical stuff. I know that bores a lot of y'all, so a lot of y'all may want to exit, okay? Um, to me, it was very spiritual, and I'm going to tell you why. Usually, like with my spirit, when I see fight videos, I've told y'all this in the past. It's hard for me now where I'm at to watch fight videos. I remember when I first used to come on social media, oh my gosh, everything, world star hip hop, you, we'd watch, you know, Sharkeisha. I would watch a lot of fight videos, you know what I'm saying? And as I gotten older, it really bothers my spirit. I don't even like to see people falling. Like, you know, like how people have channels for like accidents and stuff. I hate to see people falling, breaking legs. It just, it, it you know, it creeps me out. It just bothers me. I didn't get this with this video. I was literally transfixed, watching, trying to find different angles, you know, just transfixed with everything going on. 
You know why it was so spiritual to some people? There were people, there was a woman, an older black woman who left a comment. She said she's 62 years old. And when she saw that young boy jump in that river, it made her cry. You know why that brought chills to a lot of people? That young boy didn't think about how deep that river was. He saw somebody in need. He saw a coworker, somebody he looked at like a father figure in need and did not hesitate to jump into the water, put himself at risk. How many people do we know that are strong swimmer, swimmers and they've jumped into waters like Lake Lanier and they've drowned? That young man could have drowned. Thank God he was a strong swimmer. Maybe that was the spirit of the ancestors pushing him and guiding him through that water. Because when he came up out that damn water like Aquaman and was busting heads, I've never seen nothing like that. That little boy was slamming people. He was busting heads after he just got done swimming with one shoe on. If that's not spiritual, I don't know what is. That was a baby going at grown men who were wrong. And for y'all, for my white subscribers, y'all know I fuck with y'all. But let's keep it real. They were bothered because that old black man was a form of authority and they weren't trying to have it. And you know why? This is one thing that Emily brought to my attention. Remember. Before the black boy ever jumped in the water, there was a white boy. Nobody's talking about the white boy who had on the blue shirt that was part of the crew. Nobody's talking about that. Remember, the white boy ran to break it up. What did they do to the white boy? They just pushed him away like, get up out of here. This ain't got shit to do with you. The reason why they didn't put hands on that white boy and jump him, because they saw themselves in that little white boy. That could have been their son. When the black boy got out the water, they were swinging. They didn't have that same connection with that little black boy. That's why he was picking them up and body slamming their ass. So you can't tell me one about race because when the white boy with the crew shirt on that was a part of the crew went to go defend the black man, they gingerly pushed him out the way. They didn't jump on him. They didn't hit him with no fist. And guess what? What'd he do? He stayed on cold. He stayed the fuck up out of it. He went back to wherever he was going. He wasn't out there fighting with the rest of the crew. This was very much race motivated. People saying, well, it doesn't matter if the security guard was black. It was just probably how he was coming at them, this and that. It was. They weren't trying to hear this black man in authority tell him nothing. They had been asked multiple times to move. There were many people given the same account. And these folks refuse to move. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.